The title's a dead giveaway. All right, so let's just get into it. This is the Holy Psalter from St. Ignatius Orthodox Press. Welcome back, everybody, to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program here on the internet today. I am your host, the guy with one and a half thumbs. And as always, I'm so very happy to have you with us today. Before we get into the review, I'd like to remind everyone that this show is entirely dependent on you. If you're interested in supporting the work we do here, there are links below. And as always, as always, as always, huge shout out to my patrons for keeping the lights on literally, and the people that regularly donate to the show uh, to provide us with materials. That being said, this I technically paid for. Uh, I was a financial backer on this pro uh, project. So, but if you watch the unboxing video, you'll know that uh, David DeYoung, the uh, head honcho over there at uh, Legacy Icons, sent me a couple extras, you know, for giveaways. So stay tuned to the end of the episode for the giveaway aspect. But yeah, so here we have it. This, uh, as stated in the unboxing video, this copy right here, this one, was the very first one out of the box. Uh, he unwrapped it, took a look at it, sent me some photos, then tossed it in a box with a few extras for giveaways. Still in the cellophane and sent them my way so that we could get this out before they go on sale to the public. Now, by the time you're watching this, you, and if you were a financial backer, you might actually already have a copy. So if you don't already, um, I, I'm not going to be able to say enough good things about this. Uh, I spent hours upon hours yesterday after receiving it, pouring over literally every page of this thing. And, uh, yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, the, the usual information that you're going to want to know is uh, first and last most. This is episode 134-ish, if you're keeping count. St. Ignatius Orthodox Press, which is the publishing arm of Legacy Icons. Uh, the translation herein is attributed to Archimandrite Ephraim Lash of Blessed Memory and uh, Christopher M. Morgan, who is a scholar and translator uh, and Orthodox Christian, uh, what happened there was the Psalms are in large derived from uh, Archimandrite Ephraim's own translation and the gaps were filled in by uh, Mr. Morgan who created, uh, who used the Breton Septuagint as a basis and then corrected it so that the language matched with uh, Father Ephraim's. Uh, the editing and layout was done by the reader John Dykstra over at Legacy and St. Ignatius, as always. And, of course, our good friend David DeYoung is uh, in charge of project oversight. So nothing gets through him. Uh, let's see. Let's go into the construction first. Uh, I was, I was uh, pretty heavy-handed on this thing when I was going through it. Uh, I went through it page by page, turning it creasing it, etc. So right off the bat, I can tell you the binding is solid. Uh, as always, you can see uh, is that great hard stitch binding, glued and stitched, uh, cloth bound cover. Now in their liturgical series, every edition that's come out has had a slightly different uh, cover uh, texture feel. Um, and so this is by far the softest of and uh, more uh, clothy <laughs> of their covers. Uh, the gold embossing they used a new process for and so uh, it is uh, been said that they are looking into reprinting all their previous publications with covers like this so that it all kind of works together in a conceptually uh, continuous way. So there we go and it is the same uh, height, yeah, 
and uh, depth as the rest of the books in the liturgical series. So it's going to look very handsome on your shelf if that's where you keep them. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have any plans of keeping this on the shelf at all. Uh, let's go into what we can find in this Psalter. So with all the liturgical series, you have a presentation page of sorts. You can put whatever you want there. Uh, now it says here, the Holy Psalter with the Treparia and prayers uh, of the cell vigil, according to the ancient use of the Pentecratros Monastery. The Pentecratros Monastery is an Athenite monastery, and we will talk a little bit more about the cell vigil later on as uh, it comes up in the notes. Now, let's go over uh, a little bit of what's happening with the book. In the preface, uh, they are pretty clear that they were very on the fence about publishing this, but it kind of goes along with everything else they're publishing because of the translation they use. It only made sense to have a comparable translation to go along with, especially with the Anthologian, which between this and the Anthologian now, you can do just about anything, and we'll get into why that is later, because there's a lot of supplemental material in here. So the cell rule... Uh, right off the bat, is very similar to the desert rule that you'll find in um, the Psalter for Prayer from Jordanville. Uh, now, I did compare the texts. This is a completely different set of treparia and prayers, so we'll get a little bit more into that later. Uh, it is noted that it is taken uh, according to Codex 43 of the Holy Pontocratos Monastery, and this is the first time, to anyone's knowledge, that this has been published in English. And, of course, if that's not true, they are happy to be corrected, as am I. Uh, now, unlike all the others in the liturgical series, I decided not to be an anonymous donor. So my name is in here, along with several of our biggest channel supporters and fans, which was very nice to see. Um, very happy to see several of the names on this list. So let's go on. We have an introduction to the Psalms by St. John Chrysostom. And right away, uh, you are going to see this fantastic, fantastic uh, double stitch binding. And as you can see here, you're going to see this a lot throughout the Psalter. We do have these uh, bottom note references, which mostly in the Psalms will be concerning uh, translation notes or variations thereof. So now, and, and of course, you know, it fits right along stylistically with uh, the rest of the books in the series. Now, I got to turn the page on my notebook because uh, that first page was just pretty much the blah, 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 blahs. So as you can see, the layout, clear and easy, right? Uh, and here at the first Cathisma on page three, we already notice one of uh, the many, many notes you will see here. Uh, so it's on the line, nor sat in the seat or company of the pestilent. So there we go. Now, as we uh, continue taking a look and kind of paging through this, it's worth noting that um, this vigil is kind of meant for uh, solitaries and hermits, in a sense. Uh, the vigil itself is used uh, to replace uh, an in-church vigil. And we'll see that at some point, and I'll show you when, uh, there's actually a break, a nap break. I'm not kidding. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is the prayers after the first cathisma, and here is our first example of this vigil rule. Now, much like the Psalter for prayer, it is a set of traparia and a prayer. Um, there are several prayers by St. Basil the Great, uh, a few uh, by some uh, that, that are derived from some other services, and many, 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 many prayers that I have not seen before. Um, I'd love to know where they came from, and I'm sure if I dug hard enough into my own collection, I might be able to find a few. But by and large, most of the traparia and prayers in this rule are new to me. Here is the first example of a prayer attributed to someone uh, that I've not seen before. And by that meaning, I, I've never seen a prayer by this apparent author before. The prayer of the pious Auxentius. 
The poor and needy will praise you, O Lord. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Holy Spirit who spoke by the prophets. God is my hope, Christ is my refuge, the Holy Spirit is my protection. The angelic powers in heaven send up a hymn, and we on earth the song of praise. O fashioner of all things, you spoke and we came into being. You commanded and we were created. You made an ordinance and it will not pass away. O Savior, we thank you, O Lord of powers. You suffered, resurrection, appeared and ascended. You are coming to bring justice to the whole world, O Savior of the world. You are the God of those who repent. You are seated on the cherubim and open the heavens. Have mercy on us. Save us. Amen. Very cool prayer. Um, and as we go through this more, you'll notice that the uh, many of the troparia uh, are, are penitential, uh, almost Lenten in form. Okay. Uh, a um, lot of references, to, you know, being tossed in the storms and seas of life. You know, the sea has always been a major allegory in scripture and prayer in our uh, blessed Orthodox faith, uh, the tumult of the sea of life. So there's going to be a lot of that. So this is the prayer after Psalm 118. Now, as we know, Psalm 118 is in itself comprised of three cathismas. In Psalm 18, there is no cathisma prayers after the first and second, but... There is a longer form after the third, and we're going to get into that. This is uh, the, uh, oh, please let me pronounce this correctly, Evlogitaria, okay, which is kind of a litany, sort of. Um, it's very similar to what you might find in, in Vespers or Matins, okay? So there's that, yeah, and then we get into the Traparia. And now here we have an example of a prayer being derived from some other service. And this is also where you'll notice that from now on, uh, there will be two prayers after the Traparia, after each Cathisma. So first we have uh, the 11th Ode. Raph, there's only nine Odes. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's more. They've just kind of fallen into disuse. Uh, so the prayer of Hezekiah, King of Judah which is from Isaiah 38, 10 through 20. Uh, also, we have the 12th prayer of Matins in here. We go through the Psalms, yeah. So, prayers after the 20th Psalter. We're not done yet. No, now we're going to go through the Odes. And these are the traditional uh, nine Odes, okay? Okay, so now we have, after the nine Odes, you've got Traparia. You've got the prayer for the departed. Mm -hmm. Prayer before sleep, prayer for forgiveness from St. Basil the Great, prayer of St. Uh, Medarius from the Midnight Office, and the dismissal, okay? And at that point, you're like, okay, now you're going back to bed. <laughs> when we get to page 220, after uh, some notes on using the Psalter for the Daily Office, and of course the usual charts for this, that, the other thing, we do have some notes here on the Cell Vigil. The Cell Vigil is a private devotion intended to be, to be used as a simple replacement for the Daily Office, the all-night vigil in particular in small monasteries or skeets, or perhaps groups of laymen at home, where due to the complexity and multitude of books required, it is not practical to offer the daily office properly. This is a great way to supplement that, especially people that are trying to get into the Psalter more deeply or maybe can't make it to vigil on Saturday night. Uh, the reader begins on page one and simply reads the present book straight through. <laughs> with the prayers, etc., etc., etc. And now we have the art order for Psalter readings. And here is a really cool resource. Uh, usually you will find uh, smaller charts like this in, in some other Psalters, but it goes through every service where it uses a special psalm or cathisma, which is pretty rad. Uh, it's a great little resource, especially uh, for the student. So that's pretty cool. Now we get to the six Psalms of Matins. Um, of course, if you've got an anthologian, uh, you've seen the Matin service, that's, you know, this is here. It just makes it easier to, uh, to read if, if you're not using the anthologian, if you're you know, using this for some other reason. Um, so the six Psalms arranged here. And then you've got the Eclogarium. 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 That's a cool word. 
That's a word I didn't know before this book. <laughs> Those who uh, use the Anthologian at home will find this section very useful because it gives you that additional material that would that you would need uh, during Vespers and Matins for Feasts for special days, okay, where it calls for the Eclogorium. And it's all in here. Now, a lot of these are just uh, psalms that are arranged for uh, antiphonal praying. So you have verses. Uh, Glory to you, O God. Alleluia. It's uh, blessed is the man who has not walked in the counsel of the godly. Alleluia. Great Vespers. Instead of saying blessed is, the, you know, uh, you know, because in regular Vespers, we just read through this one. But let's say it's in the service, uh, part of a vigil in the church. So it's Blessed is the man who was not in the counsel of the ungodly. Alleluia, et cetera, et cetera. So you get the alleluia voices in there. Uh, and, you know, for here in the Paulaeus, and continuing right on. So we get to the first appendix here, right? Which I had a bookmark on. Now, the first appendix is those extra odes. These, again, have fallen into uh, disuse. And so the tenth ode would be the Song of the Vineyard from Isaiah 5, 1 through 7. Uh, the prayer of Hezekiah from Isaiah 38, 10 through 20, which we saw earlier. The uh, prayer of Manassas. The 13th ode is the Song of Simeon. We all know that one. And the 14th ode is the Doxology. Prayers for special vigils. This is really cool. So first off, we have uh, for the funeral vigil, when you're reading the Psalms over the reposed, these are the verses that you would read after each cathisma. You also have the Holy Friday Vigil. Now, in some parishes, my own included, just like uh, any other funeral, uh, when the Lord is in the tomb, we hold vigil um, in the church as well, reading the Psalms. And instead of reading you know, some other verses, these are the verses we would pray after the cathismas during that vigil leading up to Holy Pascha. And then that's it. So rad, right? Super, super rad. I don't know what the cover price is going to be on this yet. So I, I, I wish I could speak to it. But as a resource, it's fantastic. The cell rule is fantastic. The translation, if you're not into modern English, man, you should have turn this video off long ago because you know it's a modern English translation. Uh, going through the book, I only found one typographical error so far, and I forgot to write it down because I don't really care. But let's take a look at the translation real quick before we get into the giveaway stuff. Um, since I just so happened to open to Psalm 91 on the 13th Cathisma, let's read a few verses and see how it rolls off the tongue. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your love in the morning, and your truth every night, on a psaltery of ten strings, with a song on the harp. For you have made me glad by your words, O Lord, and I will rejoice in the deeds of your hands. How great are your words, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep, etc. Et so it's very comfortable to read. You know, people get used to psalm translations, and that's really all it boils down to. So when you're moving to a new translation, it's going to feel funky for a minute. So, okay, so there it is. There's the review. Now for the giveaway. So right now I have one copy to give away with more on the way. So as that happens, we'll announce it. And we got to figure out how to give this away. A lot of YouTubers, they're like, oh, like, share, subscribe, blah, blah. Listen, you got to do that anyway. So you don't have to do it, but I'm asking you nicely. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm thinking to myself, okay, how do I get people engaged? So here's what we're going to do. Below, you're going to find a link for our Discord. Join our Discord. I am going to create a thread in the Salters tab. And all you got to do is say, yo. And then after some time, I'll make an announcement. I will say, okay, that's enough. I will go through everyone that said, yo. I will count the number of people. And then I will use a random number generator to find out which one of you lucky ducks gets this unopened, brand spanking new Holy Salter. So, okay, click the links, do the thing. Thank you so much for hanging out, taking time out of your busy schedule to do some nerdy stuff with me. You're done. All right, class is dismissed. Uh, thank you again, everyone. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, uh, support the show if you would like. And on behalf of Spooky Cat, her mom, and myself, uh, thank you, David, again. And don't forget... To pray for us, we're praying for you, and as always, don't forget to go to church, 
say your prayers, and remember God. God bless.